we're going to be going over the general class descriptions as well as the assets you know weapons attachments and stuff like that that is currently in game right now as a beta one remember that as beta two comes along launch comes along and post release there's going to be more content added to the game this is just what's in there right now uh, and we're going to be showing the security side for those of you that do not have the game yet so as you can see all the classes are here I guess we'll start off with a brief uh, description. Commander can call in off-map assets, uh, mini gun runs from Blackhawks, uh, Apache rocket strikes, A-10 gun runs, and smoke and HE artillery. Uh, the observer is the radio that that provides that for the commander, so they both need to work together to call that in. Rifleman's your standard rifleman. Uh, Breacher's got more SMG and shotgun kind of focus so it's more based on breaching and actually you know getting in close to the enemy the gunner is your uh, saw gunner or your pkm uh, demolitions is focused on you know taking down enemy technicals exploding uh, caches and just you know big booms so really cool to see the uh, demolitions in here there are a lot of launchers added and we'll go over those as we get in there uh, the advisor has some really cool weapons uh, the scar for one uh, they also have you know the mark 18 so cool weapons in the advisor role and then the marksman uh, gets access to all the other weapons uh, or some of the other weapons excuse me they also get access to the m24 the svd uh the mark 14 and they have the optics the seven times i think it's believe i believe it's up to seven times optics to slot on there as well so we'll go through here as a commander uh talk about primary so as you can see here we got the g3 sks akm uh, m16 a2 the a4 uh ak74 g36k and the m4a1 so we'll go over really fast the differences so in, right now the g3 i think is one of the stronger guns of the game it's got a lot of punch it's got a lot of firepower especially with that full auto especially for only two supply points but the uh, constraint is as a 20 round magazine so it's i think it's a great gun it's probably one of the better guns in the game but you are limited to 20 rounds uh the sks is kind of like the g3 except uh you know you don't have that full auto capability and then uh, you have your akm you know standard big slugger rifle I, I really enjoyed the akm it's really satisfying to use the difference between the a2 and the a4 as far as m16s is the a2 can only fit an acog on it whereas the a4 you have the ability to fit all the op other optics on it so really cool uh you know take up that m uh m16a4 whenever you can because that rail system is upgraded as you can see right here uh this one does not have the rail system it's just got, got the guard and here you have that rail system so you can slot on all your goodies on that rail AK-74, standard rifle, right? Nothing too crazy to say here. You all have seen this before. Uh, the G-36, really cool and exotic gun to be added into uh, Insurgency Sandstorm. It's really fun to use just because of how uh, exotic it kind of feels. So awesome to see. And they also have that special sight uh, right here. That's for the G-36, the ISM scope. So this is fun to use. It's, it's not really the best, but it's definitely fun. Um, and then, of course, you have your uh, standard M4A1 full auto um it's got all those suppressors because all those attachments because you can slap it on the rail system so really cool to see and we'll go through the optics now all right so for optics you got your standard hollow you got your cobra you got your okp and red dot for your one-time sights uh for certain guns you can use flip up sights or the irons um let's see if we can find so right here the m16a4 you can just use uh flip up iron sights if you so choose but uh, on the other guns, you can just run it without an attachment and just have uh, the standard iron sights on here. Or you can slot on, you know, uh, an optic. So for your magnification, two times you get a hollow or a red dot that's using the magnified uh, hollow and red dot, obviously. Duh. Um, you have a C79 and uh, an ACOG and then an SU230 for your uh, four times. So really cool optics here. Um ammo right now there's only tracer rounds we haven't seen you know ap or hp ammo yet uh, i'm sure they'll add it in or at least i'm confident they will simply because in my experience in insurgency sandstorm there's a lot more armor uh in this game than in the first insurgency so i think ap rounds are definitely needed so that they can punch through that armor because right now it's it's actually challenged the time to kill has gone up a little bit just because of how hard it is to kill certain uh, targets wearing heavy armor uh, of course, for your barrel attachments, you got your flash hider, uh, long barrel, compensator, and suppressor. Flash hider uh, decreases the flash from your weapon, so not that good for co-op versus AI, but it does help a little bit in PvP. Long barrel increases the distance uh, of your effective uh, of your effective engagement range. Compensator decreases that recoil, and suppressor uh, silences your weapon. Uh, it's not silences, but suppresses your weapon, obviously. Uh, you do have a laser sight, which is actually very helpful. I use it a lot. Um, it's fun to use, and it looks really cool on certain uh, guns. Uh, on the G3, it's on the underbarrel, so really cool placement here. Um, foregrip, of course, for your underbarrel, you have a... Uh, grip that you can slot on to decrease recoil even further 
Uh, let's see if there's any other. You have extended mags for certain guns. Uh, the SKS does actually have an extended magazine uh, capability, whereas the G3, like I said before, is locked at 20 rounds. Uh, same attachments outside of that. The AKM, once again, same attachments. I think that's pretty much it until we get down to other classes. Uh, but yeah, you can see here that once we get the rail systems on the M16, uh, A4, the G36, and the M4, you're able to use a lot more uh, optics than on the other weapons, right? So yeah, we'll go, uh, we'll go back here to the class, uh, check out the Observer. So the Observer has access to the same weaponry as the Commander. Uh, so you're pretty much going to be mirroring the Commander with whatever you have, except you also have that radio. So you want to stick close to the Commander so you can call in that air support, right? Uh, the Rifleman, standard Rifleman, uh, same uh, same accompaniment, it's of, of weapons and optics, so it's really cookie cutter for those first three classes. You don't really have anything too special, they're trying to keep it so that um, you do have, you know, somewhat of a base, uh, you know, soldiering kind of group. So not everyone's using crazy weapons. However, the G36, I forgot to mention, does have a foregrip bipod. So just like the, uh, the saw gunner you can actually deploy bipod with this uh foregrip so really cool that they've added this into the game this was not in the first insurgency and it works out pretty well i've used it a couple times so now we're going to get into some other weapons with the breacher the cqb class so a couple things to note is it's only shotguns and smgs except for the mark 18 cqbr that's because it's you know the cqb version um but yeah so let's start with the m870 so we've got uh hollow cobra and red dot so this is one of my favorite guns in the game to use just because of how satisfying it is it's not really the uh, strongest gun in the game but god i love shotguns in this game and in uh day of infamy the shotguns in both of those games were absolutely so much fun to use so you only get one times optics on the shotguns obviously you got your hollow cobra and red dot so, uh, you know, help you uh, acquire targets a little bit faster. And now we have flechette and slug rounds. So flechette is mainly versus, uh, you know, flesh targets. Uh, you're you're not going to do too well against ammo, but man, does it rip through, sh uh, through uh, body parts. So if you hit someone in the head with this or in the limbs, it absolutely just kills them. So awesome uh, range with the flechette rounds against flesh targets, but you do have to hit, you know, uh, around the body armor. Slug rounds, of course, give you a little bit more range, but uh, I haven't really seen the need for slug rounds yet. Uh, I've been using flechette flechette rounds primarily uh, you can throw a suppressor on the shotgun it's it's really funny looking because it extends it even further makes it look a little bit futuristic but it's a lot of fun it's just really it's kind of gimmicky but it's so much fun and of course you want to throw a laser sight on there most of the time uh, because shooting from the hip with a shotgun is uh is what you're doing half the time then you have the Taz uh, 194, which is the insurgent kind of version of the shotgun, but the security forces do have access to it. So it's got the same accompaniment of attachments, so nothing too new there. You do have an Uzi making a return in uh, Insurgency Sandstorm. Uh, I mean, how could you not? This actually can fit a four times on it, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, because of that small rail system on the top uh but yeah so it it can fit some pretty silly attachments uh, i'd stick with either the irons or one times of course simply because of how this uh, gun works you can actually fit a drum magazine on here as well so really cool to use it doesn't show you actually in in this model right here but you will extend that magazine capacity to 50 rounds so definitely check out the uzi with the extended uh or ex not extended the drum magazine it's pretty wicked um, and of course, you still have the flash hider, compensator, suppressor, laser sight, and foregrip. So pretty much the same thing here for the AKS. This is also a really fun gun to use in Insurgency Sandstorm. Uh, I had a lot of fun with this in one of my first videos. And the only difference here is that you do not get any extended magazine attachments. And you, of course, there's no rail system. So you're not sticking anything crazy on it, right? Um, so you're stuck to one times optics, but still an amazing gun. I have a lot of fun with this gun. Um, but yeah, the Mark 18, definitely one of my uh, go-tos when I pick advisor, um, just because of how cool it looks. I mean, it just, it looks so, so clean. All those rails on it and just the color scheme with the tan and the black. I really do like how this gun looks. Uh, you are limited to one times, two times, and four times, um, and a selectment of those. You don't really get the, uh, ACOG on this one, but you can slot a C79 or an SU-230. So, still have that four times range. You just, uh, gotta remember that this is a CQB focused class, so you are gonna be mainly running, uh, one times optics and then, uh, fitting for CQB room clearing uh the mp7 is in game now so really cool gun to use um 
I think it, it was actually in the first Insurgency as well, as I, if, if I believe, or I had a mod for it. But anyways, it's uh, it's in Insurgency Sandstorm. You can use the flip-up sites. You can use one times and two times and even four times as well, simply because, once again, we go back to that rail system. Uh, we have Extended Mag, which you're most likely going to be running, because I don't know. The MP7 has a lot of recoil, and it doesn't do too much damage. It's really rough to use this gun. It looks cool. It feels cool. But it's just hard to control, and it doesn't do enough damage right now. So I, I kind of tend to stay away from the MP7 right now. Uh, what we can do is, while we're in the Breacher classes, go through some of the grenades and other things that we have here. So we have a mine that we use. I have not used this yet. Um, so I have yet to see this actually be utilized in-game. But uh, it might be good for some defense scenarios on the co-op versus AI. We have your standard smoke grenades, flash grenades. We have incendiaries to blow up caches. We have frag grenades to get rid of uh, enemy targets. And C4, once again, to also get rid of uh, either caches, technicals, or large groups of enemy infantry. Um, so really cool to see that stuff. Uh, we're going to go back now to the uh, class and check out, um, you know, we have our standard carriers and armor back in. So you have the light carrier, which gives you light ammunition, and then the heavy carrier, which is, gives you more ammunition and more explosive slots. Um, so pretty standard there. And same thing with the armor. You have light armor and heavy armor now, but I feel everyone runs armor now. No one, no one runs anything but heavy armor. It's just so, so utilized now. And of course you get your combat knife. So I don't know if they're going to do something to counter the uh, heavy armor thing. Because right now everyone's running armor. So it's like the time to kill has gone up drastically. So that's the breacher class. We're going to move on to the gunner. Once again, this is your heavy gunner, right? So you got your M249 uh, or your saw and the PKM. Um, you can run one time sights, two times and four times. So if you do end up needing to use that long range, you do have that capability to slot uh, a C79 or an SU230 on there. Uh, you have the compensator, which you're most likely going to be using because of how insane the recoil is on this gun. Is on this gun. It's still controllable though, so you can still fire this thing while standing up. It's it's pretty gnarly. Um, this gun can can actually serve as a room clearing weapon as well as fire support because it just it puts out so many rounds and it's actually easy to to use. I do, however, prefer the pkm just just because of how insane uh it sounds it just sounds like you're slugging huge rounds at people and and you kind of are you're shooting 7.62 instead of 5.5 uh, the 5.56 five, five, rounds on the uh saw so the pkm does have a larger round and it sounds like it so i prefer the pkm over the saw but yeah that's pretty much the only difference between uh, uh the gunner class and the other classes are that those two lmgs and here we have the uh, demolitions class. Once again, focus on explosives. They do a lot of fun stuff. Uh, they have smoke and HE underbarrel launchers on the AKM, the M16s, the uh, G36, and the M4A1. These all get two rounds of either smoke or explosive you can slot on your uh, weapon. And they also get a couple cool tools as far as AT uh, explosives here. So we have AT4s, which is your standard issue anti-tank weapon, right? Then you have a Moz, which actually has a scope on it. And then you have your standard RPG. So you get three launchers in Insurgency Sandstorm, uh, each serving kind of a different purpose. This is your standard one. This is your, uh, your long range one. And then you have an RPG here as well. Now, after we go into that, we're also going to talk about the secondaries, just because we haven't yet already. So, for the security forces, as of right now, there are four secondaries. You have the Tariq, the M005, the M45, and the L106A1. Uh, these all have unique pistol... Uh, stock upgrades which are the quick draw holsters which obviously when you swap from your primary to your secondary these will come out faster uh, you can also slot a compensator and flash hider or suppressor on some of these and then laser sights on all of them so really cool you can also extend the magazine on all of these as well um, this l10 6a1 is actually really really fun to use because uh, you can put an extended mag on here and get 20 rounds in your pistol and it's just a monster of a pistol so yeah so we'll move on to the advisor role. You get a couple of special weapons here, like the SCAR. Uh, really cool, especially when it's fully kitted here, as you can see with the, uh, the laser sight, foregrip, the, bear, uh, the compensator, and then uh, a sight. It just looks kitted. It just looks so high tech and so awesome. The only issue, of course, is it is locked to 20 rounds. You cannot extend that magazine. So it's a great fun gun to use. You have your standard assortment of attachments you can use here, except for the extended magazine. So really cool weapon. Uh, you get to use an AKS if you so choose. We've gone over that already. Now, this is the first time we see the Mark 14 EBR. The Mark 14 EBR can be used by the advisor or the marksman. And this thing can go full auto as well. And that just sounds gnarly. So it's a 7.62 chambered rifle that has full auto and semi. And it's a very versatile weapon. You can stick a four times on it, like the SU-230, and snipe with it. You can stick it two times and get a little bit uh, dirtier. Or you can go full on, full auto, 
one-time site and go clear rooms with it. It's not ideal, but it's definitely a ton of fun. Uh, standard ass uh, assortment of attachments from there as well. Now, now we see the Mark 18 CQBR from uh, the uh, from the Breacher role. It's back here in the Advisor role as well. Uh, and then we also see the SVD. So a lot of special weapons here in the Advisor role. Definitely going to be one of the roles that's picked often because you get a lot of cool weapons. Uh, so the SVD, uh, one of the first like true sniper rifles that we're going to get a look at. Um, single fire, 10 round magazine. You can stick it four times. However, this, remember, this is the advisor role. Once we switch to the marksman, you do get access to uh, extended scopes like the uh, hunting rifle scope, and I believe there's another one as well. But yeah, standard assortment of, of attachments here. Pretty pretty clean stuff. Uh, you do have the foul here for the uh, advisor, so really cool. This is the only class that has the foul, I believe. I don't think the marksman has it, but we'll take a look. Uh, I haven't used it too much. I do prefer the G3, but the foul does do a good job of kind of mirroring what the G3 can do. So definitely a pickup uh, weapon if you get a chance. L85 for all you Brits out there. I know you guys hate this gun, um, but definitely fun. It does have a SUSAT on here, which is one of the only, only guns that can run a SUSAT. So this is a unique uh, optic for this weapon. Um, but other than that, you get your standard assortment of magazine, barrel, side rail, and under barrel attachments. So really cool weapons in the advisor. Definitely one of my favorite roles to play simply because you get an access to a lot of different weaponry. Um, we're going to move on to the marksman here. So, of course, marksman focused on uh, sharp shooting and long distance engagements. Like I said before, you do get access to two 7x scopes. This is the only class gets, that gets access to the two 7x scopes. You get access to the hunting scope and the M3A Ultra, which is a huge scope, right? So, 7x, I haven't really seen the need for a 7x scope simply because of the current map design. Of course, uh, once the game develops further, there's going to be bigger maps, I, I assume, or different maps that ha cover more area. So, the 7x scopes will become you know more used but as of right now a lot of the maps are very uh cqb kind of building to building focused so it's kind of hard to work these seven scopes uh seven time scopes in you do get access to all the four time scopes with the svd so the c79 uh, m150 um you do have access to a pso this is the first time you get access and only time you get access to the pso uh is as the marksman and uh yeah we're gonna move on back on to the uh mark 14 so you can't put the hunting scope on here but you can't put the m3a ultra on it so you know it's still seven times scope still does its job once again though you haven't really seen the need to use this right now uh you can actually put a uh, foregrip bipod on the mark 14 so i mean i haven't seen that used with a foregrip bipod yet or how effective that is but i'd assume it's pretty nasty you do have an m16a4 you can use as well if you do want some of that um burst fire action i i don't know why you would because the mark 14 can go full auto but let's just say you want to use it you can um once again you are given that option for a foregrip bipod as well as the marksman you do have access to a mosin nagat now we're getting to our bolt action rifles we have two bolt action rifles as a security forces marksman right now and you can add stripper clips this is one of the only times you can add stripper clips so mosin nagat for those of you guys know shoots a huge round uh it's a gnarly rifle it's got a lot of damage on it and it's uh it's really fun and satisfying to use definitely not the most effective thing to be using especially when you have access to things like the svd or the mark 14 which can go full auto but definitely very satisfying to use and then of course you have the m24 which is kind of the more uh more security focused um version of the marksman rifle so once again you can't use the hunting rifle on this only the m3a ultra um, so yeah, that's pretty much all the weapons, uh, sidearms, explosives, and attachments for the security forces. Let me know down in the comments below if you like this kind of video. Uh, this is kind of the first time I've done a video like this where we talk about, you know, things that are in-game like this. We haven't really done any of those, even for squad. So let me know if you'd like to see more of this. I'll do the insurgents, uh, side one probably later this week. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. Remember to hit that like, comment, and subscribe button. And make sure you hit that notification button as well so you get notified of when we go live in the future. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys all in the next video. Check out my website at karmacut.com to see system specs, donation links, and latest uploads all in one place. You can also get cool rewards like Karma Cut patches and key tags on my Patreon. And don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell button for future uploads.